We are gonna learn how to play Griffwood on guitar. It's a very fun song to play. It's a little challenging, but you'll get the hang of it, no problem with this lesson. You're gonna wanna make sure your guitar is tuned to drop C. So from the first string to the sixth string, it's gonna be D, A, F, C, G, and then low C. So you're gonna tune your guitar to drop C. You're gonna hit the subscribe button and notification bell, and then we're gonna go right into the main riff of Griffwood. Griffwood is gonna start with this very like Def Leppard style opening riff. <laughs> I'm gonna make this D minor nine shape, which is all over the album actually, but essentially what that is, it's just a minor bar chord that you would play coming off of the fifth fret. But you're gonna lift that middle finger so we get this sound. Let me clean this up. It's very 80s sounding and I love it. So I'm gonna start on the fifth string with your pointer finger on five. You're gonna have your ring on seven on D and your pinky on seven on G. And you wanna keep this barred and you're gonna just go down from the, uh, what do you call it? The A string to the B string. Now when I hit this note, I can lift my fingers because I gotta hit nine, I'm not nine, because I gotta hit six on the uh, B string with my middle, and I'm gonna get my pinky on the eighth fret of D, because now we're coming down, we want, we go to the G string, which is still barred, and we're hitting um, eight on the D string with our pinky. So that first section. Now we're making this shape, so I'm gonna put my ring finger on seven on the D string. And I'm gonna keep my pinky here on the sixth fret of B. And we got. From there, I lift my ring finger, so I got. And then I hit open A. So that's like the main riff of the song. It's a little different when the whole band kicks in. The same concept. And then we have that little climb up, which is gonna be on the D string, seven, five, seven, on G, um, what do you call it? Five, seven, nine. So that would go. And then we go back to that main riff one more time. And then we have the part before the verse, which is a D power chord, down to a C power chord, back to D, and you're sliding between those. And then you're gonna hit the harmonics on the seventh fret of D and G. We're gonna go palm mute our power chord on the eighth fret. So I'm just barring, um, I'm just palm muting that power chord that we make on the eighth fret twice. And then we have our little lick, which is harmonized. Right now I'm gonna show you what I play when I play through this. So we have our pentatonic box on the 10th fret because we're in the key of D. We're staying in there. Technically it's a minor scale box, but whatever. So we're gonna bend 13 up, down, hit 10, and then we're gonna play 12 on G, 10 on G, nine on G. So that whole lick. For that main riff from the beginning of the song, up until the verse, the whole thing's gonna go like this. The other lead in the uh, is you go to the twelfth fret and you're gonna on G and you're gonna bend that up, bend it down, ten, nine, and then on the D string is twelve, ten. So this guitar is actually supposed to be for C standard. It was at my friend's place for like 
two and a half years and he put it in D standard, but it's still the original strings. And I really don't know why I'm using it to teach this lesson because it's very uncomfortable to play. But I was riffing with it and I was like, yo, I forgot how cool this guitar sounds. Let's use it. And now I'm in this situation where I have to teach you this song feeling very uncomfortable. Anyways, let's go to the verse because that's a lot of fun to play. If you watch live clips, the ghouls play it up here. I like playing it down here because we're already in this pentatonic box. So I'm going to play it here because why not? There's two ways I play this. I'm sorry, I'm picking a hair off the microphone. So I'm gonna show it to you both ways. One has this note on the G string the entire time. Because I think that matches the melody a little more, but sometimes, and I think how they play it live, is this note goes down whenever he hits um, eight on B. So it would be. And a really important thing, if you watch my picking hand, I'm pinching the strings. I'm not really, I don't like picking this because it doesn't have the same kind of sound. But that's way too aggressive for this. This is like, um, I'm trying to think, it, it's like uh, Van Halen in like uh, Panama at the end there, or like uh, the beginning of that ACDC song. Uh, oh crap, what the hell is that song I'm thinking? I, let me know in the comments what ACDC song I'm thinking of with the picking and the pinching at the beginning. I used my middle for the B string and my thumb for the G string. And what I'm gonna do is they're gonna constantly... It's one and two and three and four. And we're gonna have a double stop, so it's gonna be 10 on G, 10 on B. One, two, three, drop that pinky on 11 on B. And three and four and... So you're coming in on the and of two. One and two and three and four and... Then for the new measure, we're gonna go to here. And then on the end of two, we're gonna dip down. So I'm gonna have my pointer finger on the eighth fret of the B string. And then depending on what my ears decide on that particular day, I'm gonna keep my ring finger on 10 on the G string. Or I'm gonna drop my middle finger to hit that ninth fret on the G string. If you watch my acoustic cover, I kept it like this. I don't know, I, I like that better. And I, I personally think that's what he's doing. They're not doing that live. I don't know, I think on the album it sounds that way. But I also have another hot take about Pinnacle that I will let you guys know in another video if you guys really wanna hear my hot take on From the Pinnacle to the Pit and why everybody plays it wrong. So anyways, the second half of that little picking part starts the same way. One and two and three and four. And then on the end of four, we're spreading them big. So we got our pointer finger on the 10th fret of the G string and we got our middle, uh, not our middle, our pinky on the 13th fret of B. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two. And then we jump, jump back down to this shape for the rest of it. So that whole verse is gonna go. Or you're gonna play it the other way, which is this way. I just don't hear that note in there for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe I can hear it on the coming down, but the first time. So maybe it's a hybrid. Maybe we're actually going. Do it that what you will, play whatever makes you happy. Um, but the rest of the verse, it's the same thing as that part that goes before the verse, mostly. And then we have this little riff here that we're gonna do a lot in the pre-chorus, which is on the low E string, which is now a low C. It's three, five, seven, and on the A string, three, five, seven. So that's gonna go. And then our pre-chorus is pretty easy. We chug this power chord, the open power chord. One and two and three and four, the same riff we just did. One and two and three, and then that lick from earlier. That's your first two times. We 
do that first part again. I just tend to hit the open A string. You can go the full power chord out if you want. Then you're gonna go hit, you're gonna hit those harmonics on the fifth fret of A and on D. And you hit this guy here, the power chord right here on the third fret of uh, the low C. And it goes to a C power chord, but you got this riff here. And how we play that is we go to the fifth fret of the G string. So we got five, seven. On B, we got five, eight. And then we play eight on E. And we just keep repeating it. And then we go, yes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play the chorus because who doesn't like the chorus? So we're gonna go fifth fret. And you can hit that open string on the bottom if you want to to get that big power chord. First fret. Now, when I originally learned this song on a cruise ship moving 30 nautical knots, that's a tongue twister, 30 nautical knots in the middle of the Caribbean, I just played the power chords. But there's actually an arpeggio going on if you really listen to the song. You're gonna go. You're gonna just outline that power chord, so it's three, 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 and you're gonna hit three, five, five. So just like you would play the normal power chords, you can go. And then the second time through, you got our little three, five, seven, three, five, seven. But you got it in octaves now too, so what you can do to really Spice your life up as you can play three, five, seven on the higher C string, and then you can jump up and you can hit five, seven, nine on the G string. We do this again. And we go back to this like B chord. And we go back and forth between a B, or, sorry, B flat, excuse me. We go between B flat and A. And then I call this the Def Leppard lick, but we're going back up to here and we're gonna hit six on B, eight on B, eight on E, five on B, um, eight on B, eight on E. So it's gonna go. And you go back to your main riff. Yeah. I haven't been filming anything on this camera for that course, so I apologize. All my witty banter and coolness is lost forever into the void, which is for better or worse, uh, depending on how you feel about me. But anyways, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn the modulated chorus, the one that's up in E. Um, because we're already in the chorus mindset and I think it's a better idea to learn it while we have it in our head. Cause it's very similar. We just got to change a couple things up. This guy. And then we just shift it all up a whole step. So now it's five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine. And if you're doing the spicy version, you're gonna hit five, seven, nine, seven, nine, eleven. And then we have our new chorus, which is seventh fret, third fret. Uh, those arpeggios are now on the fifth fret each. That again. And you're just gonna hit palm mute that C power chord. And then this lick from the beginning is brought back, but it's up a whole step. So you're bending 15, bring 15 down, 12, 14 on G, 12 on G, 11 on G. And if you're doing the harmony, you bend 14, 
bring it down. 12 on G, 11 on G, uh, that note, 14 on D, 12 on D. That's your chorus at the end of the song. It's beautiful. If you're still watching this, I'm gonna let you know right now, I'm rewriting the Grinch song for, I guess, the horror film that's coming out. And I'm making it spooky and there's a lot of ghost influences. Among others, there's some Death Clock influences, there's some Coheed influences, but it's gonna be very heavy and very spooky and not Christmassy at all. And you'll wanna subscribe just to stay tuned for that. Also, my shorts that I've been posting are gonna be very much a behind the scenes on how I am creating that song, but also it's about just the recording process in general. So if you're interested in recording and how you get guitars to sound thick. <laughs> You could check that out as well. Now back to the lesson. It's a new day, it's a new you. I did a wardrobe change and um, we're gonna finish Griftwood. One thing I noticed while I was editing last night that I forgot to mention yesterday is in that last chorus when we modulate up, you can play that riff from the beginning, but it's moved up a whole step now, so we got. Come out of the second chorus by holding that C. A lot of this whole bridge section is gonna be just on power chords. We have two, we have the C power chord. But you wanna like let it ring a little bit, kind of like this ringlet that's gonna blind me permanently one day. You hear there's a little bit of sustain on it. So I'm lifting my head just a little bit. My fingers here with my power chord. If you see, I'm lifting them when I wanna kill the note. Then we have this riff that's on the low E string or C string, whatever you wanna call it. It's gonna go five, seven, eight, three, five, seven, open, two, three, and then three, five, seven, eight. We go to our next chord, which is gonna be B flat, which you can conveniently play right here on the eighth fret. And then you can go down to the third fret. And then we have other riffy single notes too. On the A string, five, seven, eight, uh, one, three, five. On the E string, three, five, seven, then we're going backwards. We're gonna hop up to the D string and play three, two, and then on the A string, it's five, three. And that conveniently puts us at our first chord again, that C. start layering this guy. Earlier, before the chorus, we had this lick. We bring that in, so it's the exact same thing, you already know it, and then we have our harmony for that single note part. The D string, we're gonna go three, five, seven, two, uh, three, five, down to the A string, three, five, seven, and then we come up to seven, eight, ten. And I know you're sitting there thinking that the D string two, three, five is the same as the A string seven, eight, ten. And you'd be absolutely right. Play whichever one you feel like playing. I do both. Then we go back to this lick again. And then we have one last harmony before the solo. D string three, five, seven. A string five, seven, eight. A string one. Two, uh, not one. One, three, five. D string, seven, five, three, two. And now get ready because here comes the solo. Two second timeout here. In my opinion, this solo we're about to learn for Griftwood is the hardest thing in Ghost's entire discography. So if you're finding this to be a little difficult, that is totally okay. It's very difficult for me. It's very difficult for anybody to play. It's a hard, hard solo. Fret not, if you're feeling stressed, there's plenty of other lessons you can check out on this channel. There's Hunter's Moon, there's Sunshine, there's Caesarion. You also might find that if you take a little bit of a break, clear your head, maybe do another song that's a little easier and more fun to play right off the bat, you'll come back and this will be a piece of cake. But with proper warming up before your playing session and some practice, there's no reason why you can't nail the solo for Griffwood. Let's learn it right now. Using the proper fingering here is gonna be super crucial to playing this fast. You don't wanna be jumbling over your fingers. This is a tongue twister of a lick, especially this opening part. 12, 14, 15 on D. 12, 14, 15 on G. 
And then I'm bringing my pointer finger up to 14 and I'm making a new box on 14, 15, and 17. And what do I mean by box? We have four fingers and we can cover four frets with those four fingers. So whenever I refer to something as a box, that's what I'm talking about. This is, this is my 12th fret box. Then I cross over to my 14th fret box, so my pointer finger is now on 14 instead of 12. Let me know in the comments if you want a more in-depth video on that. And we have the same concept here, where we're gonna go back to our D string, we're gonna play 14, 15, 17, 14, 15, 17, then my pointer finger is gonna come up, that. Then my pointer finger is gonna come up to 15, and we're gonna do the same thing, Four, 15, 17, 19. And this is where the fun begins, because we have this really fast triplet. 12, 14, 15. On G, we're gonna go 12, 14. And then on B, we have 13, 15, 13, 15. We're gonna jump up to our 14th fret. 14, 15, 17. On D, on G, we have 14, 17, and then on B, we're gonna bring our pointer finger up there to play 15, 17, 15, 17, and then this is where it gets weird because I didn't know this at first. There's this note in there, there's 18. I always miss that note, and then it totally threw off the whole solo, but that note's in there. This is kind of easy, it's just fast. On the D string, 15, 17, 19. On G, 15, 17. On B, 15, 17, uh, 18. And then we have, we cross over, so my pointer finger is gonna hit 17. And then I'm gonna bend 20 up. Congratulations, you made it through the hardest thing on Ghost's entire discography. You should give yourself a round of applause if you processed that and got through it because the, you, that automatically makes you a much better guitar player than a lot of guitar players out there. I'm considering putting out a video specifically on this solo. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, we can break it down more in depth. We can talk about the other positions. I do think the Nameless Ghoul plays it higher on the fretboard and like the, on the G string. Something like that. We could talk about this in another video if that's something you're interested in. Let me know in the comments. Okay, we have the rest of the solo. So this part's not that bad. From that bend on 20, we bring it down. We play 17 on E. We bend 20 back up. Bring it down. And then hammer on from 17 to 20. Pull off to 17. I'm gonna bar the 10th fret of B and E with my pointer finger here. I'm gonna use my pinky to hit 13, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick 13, pull off, pick 10 on the B string, then I'm gonna bring my ring finger to 12, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Pick, pull off, B string, back to 13, pick, pull off, back to the B string. Now you gotta make this big stretch to 15. Now I'm gonna down pick all of these. I'm gonna pick 13, and then I'm gonna pick 12. So that part is. Slide the shape down. So now I'm barring eight on E and B, and my pinky's gonna hit 12. Same pattern though. So it's pick, hammer. So same pattern though. So it's gonna be pick, pull, pick, move to the next fret, which is 10 on E. 12, 13, 10, I'm sorry, 12, 10. And then the other doozy part is the end. That was like the sloppy version of it. Pick 12, hammer on, hammer on, pick 12, hammer on, hammer on. Doing the same thing on the G string. Then I'm moving my pointer finger up to uh, 13 on B. I'm gonna hit 13, 15, 17. Same thing on the E string. And then I'm gonna pull off from 17 to 15, down to 13. So you're climbing up the mountain and you're going back down the mountain. I'm gonna pick 17 on B. Then I'm gonna pick 13 on the B string. And I hammer on 15, 17. Pick 13 on E, hammer on 15. Hammer on, 17, now use all your fingers to bend that up.
You're gonna bend it up a minor third, it's a big bend. And then you bring it down. Now what gives it the sound you hear on the record is you don't pick it when you bend it up again. You're just gonna go. Good luck. I'm gonna play it for you slowly one last time. And then say play Griffwood. It's one of my favorite songs off of Impera, although that's pretty hard because I really can't pick a favorite. Actually, that's not true. I have like five that are in constant rotation for my favorite. But that's how you play it on guitar. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoy playing it. And let me know in the comments what other ghost songs you want to learn. And I will see you in the next video. Peace out.